the opera is about a young princess. Her mother actually uh, betrayed her biological father and sort of divorced him uh, and married his half-brother, which at the time was so out of the norm that John the Baptist, Yochanan, was very against her mother. Salome, the young princess, hear his voice, is preaching all the time, things that nobody understands, and she finds herself fascinated by him and uh, everybody is so afraid of that prophet and she's the only one who's actually not afraid and really fascinated and wants to see him and meet him and he's the only one who refuses her. Musically is fantastic and of course uh, the libretto, everybody knows the libretto because there is a, another very famous opera by, uh, called Salome which is the Salome by Strauss. The story is about love and death but it's about also uh, the eternal fight between uh, the human being and the power that the human being wants deeply to have and the power of eternal life. It is spectacular. It's sort of post-Debussy. Um, so it's like, uh, it's like Peleus and Melisande on steroids. It's, it's, it's got all of the beauty and sensuousness of the Debussy, but it's got real muscle as well. It's a big orchestra and it's the passion that pours out of that orchestra is amazing. Working with Rosetta, who is still a great pianist, a great musician, who starts from the music, who understands the music, and who I can talk to directly about, oh, but the music's got that chord there, and it's got this thing here, and she immediately understands that that has to be represented on stage. When there's a surge of passion in the music, if it doesn't come on stage, it doesn't make sense. That's what makes opera powerful. Herod is a very complicated character, very weak. He, uh, he has weakness for, for this stepdaughter. She, Salome, has weakness for John the Baptist. When she hears his voice and hear, hears him, she becomes infatuated with him. Every time I hear his voice coming from, from the prison, from the cistern, I, I seem to have like schizophrenic uh, panic attacks that uh, I see visions, I see wings, I, I, I feel cold, I feel hot. All kinds of things happen. So dis to distract myself from these self-doubts and, and weaknesses, I said, dance for me. And she, then she says, okay, what will you give me? And I promise her half of my kingdom, whatever you want. And she says, I'd like the, the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. And of course, this is the last thing I want to do because I, I've been keeping this man away, tucked away so that we don't have any problems because perhaps he's a man of God. I even say that. Come on, Salome, anything else? You can have anything. And no. She wants the head, so in the end I give her what she wants. The voice of um, John the Baptist, Joe Canaan, is um, Igor Golovitenko, who is a, a world-class voice. He's a hot property, and when you hear him singing, that is, that is a stonking voice. He's really impressive. For some reason, and perhaps just because of the Strauss, this other masterwork has been completely eclipsed, um, and nobody seems to know about it. And I. When I was asked to do it, I just thought, oh, what's this, another Salome? And once I started listening to it and looking at it, I thought, why is a piece like this not known? Everybody in the cast, myself, the conductor, all the singers, we can't understand why this music is, came out from the rap, because it's, it's amazing. And uh, the sound, the thickness of the sound, and the deep, uh, intense uh, passion that there is on the music is something that I can't wait the public to know this opera. Opera is about emotions. Opera is about feelings. And I think that in this story specifically, in this sort of interpretation and staging that Rosetta Kuki has done, there is so much emotion and there is so much art and life inside of it that you would just miss out one of the most beautiful experiences you can have.